Hey guys, welcome to part three of making a desert terrain table for Malifo. In part two, we went ahead and used bark to glue on to the rocky faces of the hills that we're building in the back of the table. In part three, now we're going to spackle the board, most of the whole board, but you'll see how it goes. And we'll also make the uh, dried up riverbed. So here we go. Take a look. Now this is the first time I use Plaster of Paris. I don't think I ever messed with this stuff before, but it's really good stuff. It comes out pretty hard, but you have to get the mix right. My first batch wasn't all that great. I should have added more Plaster of Paris, so it was a little runny, so it took a little longer to dry. The second batch was actually pretty good. It's towards the back of the river, so it worked much better for me. Now the concept's pretty simple here. Do a th really thin layer of plaster of Paris. Since the foundation is foam, I could press down on it and make the cracks. Now I've looked up uh, other products such as, uh, I believe was something called Chrome, uh, as well as the golden um, crackling paste. Now all those are great. Fortunately, I'm gonna need a lot just for this river part, as well as it has this really long dry time and at the at this point, I was thinking trying to get this done by the weekend, I didn't have time to, you know, use those type of uh, crackling paste. Then I was looking over at the crackling, you know, varnish and stuff like that. And all that does is really just give you the uh, illusion of cracks, but not actual cracks. I wanted, you know, that texture of the cracks and stuff. So I was talking to Les on the phone about it. Made some inquiries to Michelle, Oasis Rising, see how she did her cracks, and you know, because she talked to less about it. And we just came to the conclusion why we try Plaster Paris, which is what we're going to use here. The most important thing is waiting for it to dry. Okay, for spackling, we are going to use the DAP patch paint and this lightweight spackle. So basically what I'm using here is kind of a spatula that you use for, you know, cake frosting. That's the best I use. Don't use something that's too hard like a, you know, a hard metal spatula because this stuff is like really lightweight. It's like airy. It's different from the actual regular spackle. So one of the tricks about this is that you really have to use it liberally. If you're filling in like a big hole or a gap, you're gonna have to fill that sucker and you're just gonna stuff that stuff in. It's weird how it works. It's hard to explain. It's maybe, I don't know, maybe almost like whipped cream, I guess. Maybe a little heavier, like heavy cream. Whipped heavy cream is what it feels like. But the great thing is, is the stuff is sandable. It's really, really light. So that's why I like using it too. If you use regular spackle on a table this big, it adds up, it'll get heavy. I do use regular spackle a little later on because I ran out of the lightweight stuff but not enough to worry about the weight on this. You can see here, I'm covering it all up. Not all of it, but uh, you wanna just cover the gaps up, leave the exposing bark as much as you can, but it's okay with the lightweight spackle, you could actually, you know, swipe it up against the uh, texture of the bark and it'll kind of conform in a way. It's okay, we're gonna go through and sand the spackling down just to, you know, form the look right up against the wall itself and, and the bark itself, so that it matches, it looks like a mountain or you know cliffs or whatever we're trying to achieve here. But you will see when we get to that part. Right now we're just spackling whatever and we need to spackle. Some of the, you know, you see the opening cracks here, we'll spackle those too. Spackle the, uh, you know, inclines and stuff. Now, whether or not we leave these, you know, little, I guess you call it spatula mark. In painting we call it brush, brush strokes. I guess we call it spatula strokes. We could sand it down and honestly, uh, you know, you just sand it down a little because we're going to flock it over. Now here I'm using the regular spackle stuff. I'm actually using popsicle sticks to do this on because this stuff is a little thicker. If you watch Michelle's video, she's doing a uh, display board. She's used this regular spackle stuff too. Stuff you just need, I don't know, smaller, harder kind of object to actually slap on this spackle. But it'll work just the same. The final output of what you're trying to achieve will, will be the same thing. It's just one's going to be heavier than the other. Now you may have also noticed if you watch some you know, parts of the where I put on the spackle is that I made raises and stuff to make it not so flat, right? So you can use the spackle stuff and just make little raises, little highs, ups and lows and type of thing. And then we'll just flock it over later and it'll look like, you know, dunes of sand. 
Okay, now, so here we go. I'm going to crack the river. You see, I've done a little now. Here's the problem. It was not dry yet, and that was one of the dumb things using a bottle bottom, and then it just made those tracks. Yeah, but anyways, I used the bottle to press it down, but it wasn't cracking because it wasn't dry. So the weird thing about Plaster Paris is that it takes a little while to dry if it's a thin layer. But if you goop it in the cup, it dries really quick. Like in 20 minutes, you got a hard couple rock, really. So here, it's not dry. I made a couple boo-boos. I was like, ooh, okay. But it still looked okay. I mean, we still got, we can live with that, as you can see here. We can live, kind of live with that. So what I did was did that and then took a bottle of watered down white glue and then uh, just sprayed it on just to make sure all the cracks stay in place because once you crack it, it will not stick to the foam. But anyways, here's a boo-boo moment. It's still wet. So we're going to wait and then try it again when it's completely fully dried. Okay, now it's fully dried. As you can tell in the front part here, you'll see my mistakes, but then if you go further back, you'll see the actual cracks when it's dry. Now, the great thing about it is the front part was thin. That was the thin mix. Now the back part I thought was great because I got the right mix, but now it's really hard to get the cracks in. I used the bottle technique, and here you see me pushing it down. It is cracking. The problem is, is because the mix was actually much thicker this time, it just cracked. It didn't like split crack type of thing. I even used my fist to push down on it. So I thought I'm kind of like, oh man, may I get to do this again? But here's where I made an accidental find. Right here, you'll see me push down the bottle. And then out of habit, you know, I just blew on it. And then suddenly the cracks appeared. I'm like, oh, well, there we go. So I just did more breaks pushed it more down and it just kept blowing all the little chunks away and then you could see the cracks appear a lot more apparent probably hard to see in the camera here i'm showing well you know it, you'll be more pronounced when we paint it up as well so i went ahead and just kept cracking it and try to get some of the little you know more non-cracked areas cracked by using my thumb and then just you know blow some of the excess cracks away then took a vacuum and just vacuum all the extra, you know, junk away. So um, that's pretty much how I made the cracks on the river. We'll see how it turns out once we paint it. Of course, worst comes to worst, the best idiom for making terrain is if you mess up, just flock it. Now I'm also going to take a little time here to talk a little some of the stuff I've tried. Um, I tried a hammer. Uh, don't do that. Um, even tapping it a little. All it did was create like kind of cracks, but like a rounded crack. So it looked like Hulk went running around and crossed the board on the dry riverbed. You have like little Hulk tracks. So a hammer don't really work. Pushing down in large areas using a bottle like I did just kind of came out, you know, just like, all right, just try this. And it seemed to work a lot better. Now, once we get it cracked, it's going to be loose. So again, use, you know, watered down PVA glue. Uh, mix like a 50 50 that's what I use and just spray it on I did it like a few times like three or four times I sprayed it you know sprayed it on let it dry came back sprayed it on let it dry I just wanted to make sure the cracks stay on the actual board now you see the sides on the river there we could fill it up with flock no big deal it, right now it looks kind of haphazard but again you know the next step we'll just clean it up a bit with flocking and, and all that stuff the uh, other thing is the crackling mediums, the varnish, Martha Stewart makes them, yeah, a lot of people make those. The problem with that is it's pretty much you're paying you know, a price for it that you don't need to. Now the reason why I'm saying you're paying the money out that you shouldn't have is that you could do the same effect with Elmer's glue. There is an effect where you put down the Elmer's glue, or I'm sorry, the white glue, okay, and let it dry to the point where the top is actually dried out, and then you would paint over it. And depending on which stroke, how you stroke your paint onto the top of the drying uh, PVA glue, it'll create cracks out of them. It looks good actually, but it doesn't have the texture to it. And we'll call it quits from here. In part four, we will go ahead and seal up the bare parts of the foam that's still showing, as well as seal in the bark. Because it, the way it's dried here, if you rub against it, you could, you know, knock off some of the pieces if you hit it hard enough and stuff. So we, we want to give it a little more foundation as well. We'll go ahead and probably prime the board 
not sure we'll see what happens guys thank you for watching i hope you learned some stuff from here if you got comments suggestions especially about the cracking of the you know riverbed uh let me know put it in the comments down below and finally like if you like this video and share where you can and it always helps if you share my videos so that i know someone out there is actually watching me all right thanks for watching guys i'll talk to you guys later